Okay, gang, let's take a look at lesson two here for 15.1. We've already talked about percent yield, sometimes called percent reaction, as a way of predicting the position of equilibrium. There is another way, and it also comes up in that North Carolina, North Carolina online video uh, with the chemistry teacher moving the beakers of water back and forth. He keeps using a term called rate constant, we will call it equilibrium constant, and it's usually given as symbol K. This is just another way that we can use the equilibrium concentrations to predict a position of equilibrium. And sometimes this is preferred, especially as we run into more complex problems in which, let's say, we cannot get a equilibrium concentration for one of, the, uh, one of our various entities. This can be something that is a little more global in its approach. All right, so we'll take a look at it here and go through a few examples. So this is another quantitative type of statement that we apply to our equilibrium systems. All right, we see that your temperature and your concentrations should be maintained. All right, so we do want temperature to be the same. If you start playing with temperature, of course, you're going to start playing with the amount of available energy and change where equilibrium lies. So for this one, what we'll do is we'll just take a look at a generic equilibrium system. You can see you have two reactants, two products, okay? The lowercase letter here is just representing your molar coefficients. The large letter, the capital letter, is just taking a look at your species and therefore its concentration. Okay, so if we take a look at a ratio of the concentration of the products raised to the power of their molar coefficients, and take a look at the ratio of the reactants and their molar coefficients. What this does is it allows us to predict where we might be. Of course, it is a multiplication statement. This is overly simplified. This is not how you would use it. All right, but I am just trying to simplify where things come from. There's your products. There's your reactants. Okay, and so you can see where those are various concentrations and molar coefficients go. But look at this. If your products had a greater product than your reactants, you would get a number greater than one. And so we could predict a product favored equilibrium with any number for K that is greater than one. If, however, your reactants got to a larger product than the, uh, than the product, pardon me, the reactants got to a larger number than the products, then you have a number less than one, a small decimal number, and we could interpret that as a reactant-favored equilibrium. So this is easily interpretable very much like percentage yield. Um, there are no units. They all cancel out since everything here would be moles per liter. And so we just take a look at a number to describe the position of equilibrium. This is used in conjunction with percentage yield. Some questions will ask for both. All right, there are some slight and subtle issues with this one. So this is known as your equilibrium law expression. This means that these numbers that you put in here can only come from the equilibrium line of your ice table. Okay, you must have equilibrium numbers before you can do this. K is a constant value for any set of equilibrium concentrations, so long as the temperature is constant throughout. If you heat things up or cool things down, K will change. Again, no units. And then we have this little interpretation. If K is greater than 1, products are assumed to be favored. This is not perfect. All right, so we gain confidence in the position of equilibrium as the number gets larger and larger or smaller and smaller. If we were doing this in class, we'd start talking about something called the rule of 1,000, where we would start to feel confident in a product-favored equilibrium if the number was 1,000 or greater, or reactant-favored if it was 1,000th. But for the most part, we just assume here uh, under our curriculum that if k is a whole number larger than 1, it's likely to be product-favored. If it is a number less than 1, it is likely to be reactant-favored. There's only a few odd exceptions where you get into, uh, never mind, it's, it's not important. <laughs> uh, condensed states, all right, so if you are a condensed state such as a solid, okay, these are constant concentrations throughout, 
so they are not included in this. Liquids are very, very difficult to condense. That's the whole science behind hydraulics. Okay, so we really do not look at ones with liquids. So it's only things that have variable concentrations, which are our gases and our solutions, which are really the only things we've been looking at so far in this unit. There is one exception. You guys will not see it in at-home learning, but if all states were liquid, then we could do an equilibrium law expression. Don't worry about it. We're not going to do this to you. So, tons of examples on page 684 and 685 of the text. Uh, we'll do a couple of these things here. I don't want this to drone on because it is really just a plug and play formula. So we'll take a look at a couple of examples here for number one and uh, maybe into number two before this video expires and we'll just sort of put it together. So we're being asked here to write the equilibrium expression. So what would be a generic expression for this reaction A? Well, if we were to take a look at that one, K is just going to be equal to the ratio of the product concentrations raised to the power of their molar coefficient divided by the reactant ones. So for A, so we take a look at that one. All right, the concentration concentration constant here would be the product of nitrogen monoxide raised to the exponent of two for its molar coefficient. And then we would divide this by the concentrations of nitrogen raised to the power of its coefficient, which is just one, so we ignore that, and oxygen. And again, no molar coefficient, so no number there. This is the formula that you would make from the equilibrium law expression. Just, we're missing the actual concentrations. All right, so all we've done is come up with a formula. Here's another one, we'll take a look at C. All right, for this you can see a gas solid solid. So if we wanna know this particular expression. All right, your products here or calcium oxide, but it's a solid. Remember, solids aren't included. So we would have carbon dioxide. Oops, CO2. Its molar coefficient is one, so that's ignored. We would put this over the reactant, but the reactant, calcium carbonate, is also in solid form. It would be ignored. And so your K value here will just be the concentration of carbon dioxide. Here's another one to look at. All right, we have this one here. You can see gas, gas, solid. If we write out that expression, the one product is solid, ammonium, hydrogen, sulfide. So there would be nothing in our numerator. Ammonia and hydrogen, sul uh, hydrogen sulfide gas here are uh, reactants. And so I would have to put those in. Both have a coefficient of one, so we don't have anything raised to any weird powers. Okay, I will show one more, kind of running out of room in this one spot here, but let's take a look at D. We'll zip over here. All right, we want to look at the KC for this one. The only reason I talk about this one is you've got all sorts of extra powers. Don't forget how you put in your exponents for things other than squares and cubes in your TI calculator. So for this one, all right, we have a product of nitrogen monoxide. It's raised to the power of four. You have water vapor, that's another gas, raised to the power of six. This is all over ammonia, another gas. So notice I'm checking states as I do this, guys. And oxygen, which is yet another gas, raised to the power of five. Okay, there are a bunch of your different ones just practicing writing the expression. In number two here, we'll take a look at putting the expression together based upon the formula. And then here we actually have some concentrations to go calculate a number and make some interpretations. All right, we'll get through two and three, hopefully in the next video.